This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Right before uh, I came on mm-hmm. here, the, you know, the jury came back again. And the jury was uh, said, we are basically hopelessly deadlocked. We have, they wrote a long note, which mm-hmm. they read fundamentally, we're not, we, it's, we're at a bypass. We can't go any further to that. Lally responded, who's the CW's, uh, the prosecutor said, uh, he was asked by the judge, did Lally think they had done their duty? Mm-hmm. You know, it had deliberated long enough, which Lally said in a nutshell, no, they haven't, they should go back. Mm-hmm. You know, they've only, uh, deliberated one day, uh, for, you know, the 28 days or something mm-hmm. like that of testimony. And so they need to go back basically. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, the pro or the defense got up Yanetti and basically said, no, we're good. <laughs> we think they've done their duty. <laughs> and I've had a lot of people say, well, that's not exactly what he said. Well, yeah, that was the point in a so, nutshell. Yeah. In a nutshell. Uh, one was happy with that, obviously, because they're pl- their client gets to continue on bond. They're not going to go to jail, blah, blah, blah. If indeed they would have been found guilty. And the judge said, no, listen, we're going to read what, what they call the Rodriguez um, uh, note, if you will, a uh, direction. And it basically is the one last chance the judge has to say, listen, please find, uh, you know, go back and deliberate one more time and ask yourself, is your reasonable doubt really reasonable? Yeah, that's kind of what it says in in either direction. Yeah, if yeah. Doubting conviction or doubting, and sent them back again. But in the meantime, right after that, is there are and take this for what you will, Tony. But source information that came out, and they're saying that the reason that there's this deadlock is some jurors are in complete fear, uh, not only for their life but for being harassed, stalked, mm-hmm. uh, so on, if it, depending on their vote, and that that is affecting uh, the deliberations. And supposedly they're going to beef up some other, you know, yeah. more police and all this. That source information that was told to me, I, I never really like to repeat source information. Mm-hmm. I'm repeating it for everybody to consider. Sure. Sure. And it would not be surprising uh, at all. Uh, I mean, just considering the, the the nature of this and how vile people have been uh, in this case, this has felt more like a political campaign than it has an actual trial. Uh, when you when you look at how it's all gone and the camps that people have got into and the just fierce digging in, no matter what we have for facts, it doesn't matter. This is where we're going to be outside of the jury. Um, So I'm not at all surprised that we're sitting here at a deadlock. I called it right away. It's the first thing I said. I said it's going to be a hung jury um, just because of all the factors that you just talked about um, and the fact that it's just confusing as hell to a jury, all of these things. Um, So I'm not surprised that that it's sitting uh, where it's at. Are you surprised that they're this deadlocked uh, at this point in time? Well, you and I uh, agreed on this from the go. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, I think my exact words were, this case is a microcosm of what we're seeing on social media, mainstream media. And that is an impasse yeah. for those people who have dug in and they've said the police messed this up. Proctor's a horrible person. There were red solo cups used to collect snow and it was kept in a brown bag on the exchange that came from a grocery store. They are dug in. Yeah. And then there's the other people who are dug in were dug in before they saw one lick of evidence. All these people outside have not went, watched one lick of this trial. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, many of us like me have watched every second of the trial. Yeah. And so, but yet they're out protesting. Why, why, what is, where's their information from? Yeah. It's all from really the same source. And yeah. that's people who are giving information that is not accurate about what happened at trial. Uh, that's how I see it. And that's the thing. If you're given information that's not accurate at trial, but it reconfirms your confirmation bias, that's what they want. They want to keep feet. I mean, we're seeing that in so many areas of our country right now. I'm wondering, I mean, this is an interesting example here. I'm wondering how many other trials we're going to see get more and more deadlocked going forward. 
just the way that people are digging into their opinions, um, where, where people just can't seem to come together on, on almost anything anymore, even just basic facts. It's really been kind of a fascinating uh, study, if you will, to watch. Want to listen ad free? Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.